In this video, we'll be learning about everything you need to know about the use effect react hook. This video has chapters, so feel free to skip to whichever part you like. So what is the use effect hook? It's a hook given to us by react, which runs side effects in our components. So basically it lets us do something we want whenever something else happens in our application. An example would be calling an API whenever a particular variable in our component is updated. So first we'll take a look at the syntax and then we'll take a look at two examples which will cover everything you need to know about the use effect hook. So firstly we need to import the hook from react. So in our component over here, we will go to the top and say import use effect from react. And then we'll go to the top of our component and we'll call the use effect hook. Now the use effect hook takes in two parameters. Firstly is a function, which will usually be an arrow function. And the second is an array. Inside this array, we write down any variables we want to keep a track of. And then when any variable inside this array gets updated, this function, which we passed gets called. So over here, we write down any code, which should run whenever the variables get updated. And from this function, we return another function, which is called the cleanup function. And this cleanup function always gets run before the next re-render. So whenever a variable inside this array changes, it will first call this function and run any code inside it. It will re-render the component and then it will call whatever code is here before the return statement. Now, an important thing to remember is that if this dependency array over here, if we leave it empty without any variables, this function will only get called the first time this component renders. Also, if you don't specify any array over here, this function inside the use effect hook will get called whenever the component renders. So it's important to define an array. And if you want to keep track of a variable, you should put it inside the dependency array itself. Now, two important things to keep in mind about the use effect hook. Firstly, it can only be called inside functional components and not class-based components. And secondly, it needs to be at the top of your component and you can't define it inside any if else statement or any for loops. This is because react keeps a track of all the hooks in your component based on the order that they're called in. And if you have any if else statements or loops, the order can change based on the state of your component and react will give you an error. By the way, I'm constantly making react tutorials and react projects. So if you want to learn more about react, do subscribe to the channel. So now that we know the syntax of use effect, let's take a look at our first example. For this, we'll be making API calls. And for that, we'll be using JSON placeholder, which is a free service you can call to test out your API calls. So in our component over here, we have two stateful variables, the post ID and the post content. We're rendering out the post content inside this P tag over here. And then we're using the post ID to fetch the data from the API and render out the data for that particular post. And then whenever we click on this button over here, which is next, it updates the post ID so we can render the next post. Now, what we want to do is whenever this component loads, we want to make a query to the API and render out the post content. And then whenever this variable called post ID gets updated by clicking on this button, we want to fetch the next post as well. And for this, we'll be using the use effect hook. So we'll go to the top over here and we'll import it from react. And then we'll call the use effect hook below our use states. So remember the first thing is a function and the second thing is an array. Now we'll use the fetch function. So we'll copy it over here from the JSON placeholder website and we'll paste it over here. And instead of calling the to do's endpoint, we want to call the posts endpoint. And then instead of logging the response, we want to call the set post content function and set post content to whatever is returned. We'll say set post content. And then since we want to pass in a string, instead of just passing in the JSON like this, we'll say JSON dot stringify and then pass in the JSON data like that. And we'll save that. And you'll see that the data is now rendered out because the use effect hook gets called only once when the component loads, which is because the dependency array is empty. So even if we click on the next button, nothing happens. 
also by just calling the post slash one all the time. So we want to do string interpolation. So it uses the post ID variable to call this API. So we'll use backticks and we'll use curly braces and use the post ID variable. If we refresh, you'll see that nothing happens when we click on the button. And that's because the use effect hook is only getting called when the component loads, which is because the dependency array is empty. Now we also want this function to get called whenever the post ID variable is changed, because when we click on next, we want to see the next post and that can only happen when the API is called again. So instead of having an empty dependency array, we'll add the post ID variable over here. And what this does it is it tells react that whenever this post ID variable changes, when we click on the next button, it'll make this API request again, call set post content and then update the data inside our web page. So now if we click on the next button, we see that the data is fetched again and again, and it gets rendered out based on the latest data. Now we'll take a look at our second example, which will give us a better idea of why we need the cleanup function. So what we want to do in this example is we have two stateful variables, which have the current mouse's X position and the mouse's Y position, and we just want to render it out. So currently, of course, nothing is being rendered out because we don't have any values for this. Now, an easy way to do this is to add an event listener to the mouse move event. And since we only want the event listener to be added whenever the component first gets rendered out, we'll be using the use effect hook. So we'll say use effect and it gets automatically imported. Call in the arrow function over here and then the dependency array. And since we want the event listener to be added whenever the component is rendered, we'll just keep the dependency array empty. Over here, we'll define a function which basically set, calls set mouse X and set mouse Y based on the current mouse's position. So we'll say const handle mouse move, take in the event, and we'll say set mouse X to the event dot client X value and set mouse Y to the event dot client Y value. And this event variable will be passed to us by the event listener, which we defined. So below here, we'll say window, which is a global variable and add event listener. And then we'll say we want to listen to the mouse move event. And whenever this event occurs, we want to call the handle mouse event function, which we've defined over here. Now we'll save that and we'll refresh. And we see that the latest value of the mouse's position is getting printed out. Now, although this works, there is an issue. And it's that even if we change the page or if the component is not being rendered out anymore, this event listener will still be listening to the mouse move events and be calling this function. And that's not good because if you have a bunch of event listeners on your page, it can really slow down your page. So what we always want to do is inside the cleanup function, we want to remove this event listener. So that whenever the component is not being rendered on the page anymore, we don't have any event listeners listening to events. So we'll just say return to return the cleanup function. And inside the function, all we'll do is say window dot remove event listener. And on the mouse move event, we'll say handle mouse move. And what this does is that whenever this component stops being rendered out, we remove this event listener. And that way, the performance of our component will be a lot better. And if we refresh, it still works as intended. So that's about it for the use effect react hook. If you like the video, please do subscribe, share and like, and comment down below if you have any other ideas for tutorials I should do.